Hey guys, it's Raymond, and it's that time of the year. A couple of weeks ago, Apple released their latest iPhone models, the iPhone 15 and 15 Pro. Today, I have the 15 Pro Max in natural titanium. So, let's unbox it. And here it is, Apple's newest iPhone, their latest attempt at perfecting the smartphone, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And while it may look similar to previous iPhone models, Apple has made a few adjustments to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. First, Apple has used titanium instead of stainless steel for the frame, making the phone lighter and easier to handle. They have also rounded out the corners, which Apple believes will make a noticeable difference in how the phone feels in your hands. Additionally, the bezels on the new 15 Pro models have been made smaller, which Apple says allow them to reduce the dimensions of the phone without affecting the display size. Overall, the era of a completely new design language for smartphones, including the iPhone, seems to be behind us. Now, it's more about making small changes to improve the device and the user experience. Let me know what you think about these incremental changes happening in smartphones nowadays. Do you agree with this approach? Or do you prefer to have a completely new design every few years? Comment down below. Every year, Apple introduces new features to try to entice us to upgrade or switch over to the latest iPhone. This year, one of those key features includes the action button, which replaces the mute switch. It can be mapped to various actions, such as toggling silent mode on and off, activating a focus mode, your camera, the flashlight, and much more. I'm not sure how I feel about this, but we'll see if it becomes useful or just another underutilized feature. Personally, I was hoping that the action button would resemble the one off of the Apple Watch Ultra, as I believe it would have looked really nice on the iPhone. Another notable addition is the USB-C port, which not only improves transfer speeds with the proper USB cable, but it opens up the iPhone to a wider range of accessories as well. Soon, the days of asking for an iPhone charger will be behind us. And as always, Apple has made improvements to the camera. This year, several new camera features have been added, including additional focal lengths of 28 millimeters, 35 millimeters, and a new five times telephoto lens equivalent to 120 millimeters. It's also worth mentioning that the main camera now captures 24 megapixel photos instead of 12 megapixels, enhancing the image quality. I'm excited to thoroughly test these and other features for my full review on the iPhone 15 Pro Max that I'm currently working on. So don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell to stay notified on all the iPhone 15 Pro Max content coming your way. Having upgraded from the 13 Pro Max to the 14 Pro Max and now the 15 Pro Max, there's a few things that I pay attention to during my review process. One crucial aspect is the battery life. The 13 Pro Max, it had the best battery life of any iPhone I've ever owned. Unfortunately, the 14 Pro Max fell short last year. I'm hoping that the new iPhone 15 Pro Max can either match or surpass the battery performance of the 13 Pro Max. What are your expectations for the iPhone 15 Pro Max? What do you wanna know about the phone that would help you decide whether to purchase it or not? Comment below so we can discuss it and I can then focus on those aspects in my upcoming full review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.